for like this opportunity to present this topic. And I, I guess without further ado, I bring to you. So um, the topic of our conversation will be practical aspects of performance optimization in web applications, Angular. I have chosen this, uh, this exact naming for this topic just to uh, highlight the needs which uh, facing uh, the developer in the regular everyday normal project. And uh, for those of you who appreciate the general, I have prepared the last slide to the as a link to this memo song also, uh, which I found really um, similar to this to this one moment because uh, that's how the life goes on a regular project. So let's go to, through the agenda. Um, the first uh, point will be disclaimers where I'm trying to describe uh, what we are going to talk about and what we are not going to talk about since as uh, this topic like performance optimization can be a wide and a lot of uh, points, a lot of ideas can be placed over here. We don't have uh, like a lot of time and we also uh, cannot hold all the knowledge together there. So I decided to place only those items which I can really share with you guys. So the one which um, I have like uh, checked on my experience with a different project which I was involved in. Uh, the second point will be collect information and useful tool tools for it. It's pretty straightforward. I don't think that uh, we should like stop on theirs. And then we'll, we will talk exactly about optimization, which can be uh, done on the project. And I have divided this to the two subtopics. It's a data transfer optimization, runtime optimization, which basically uh, the two points which uh, could be done on my opinion on the project as well. And when to do, that will be a pretty short one. So let's go ahead. Disclaimers. So the first, I believe, three points or so is uh, more like a joke to uh, for you to be like uh, more relaxed on this because I wanted to be this presentation more like a sharing experience, ideas, and not about like strict divided topic or so. So uh, it's like a sharing experience between us. Uh, and uh, as a disclaimer that. Uh, in case if you break something on your project, that's only your fault or so. So mainly that information which uh, I will share with you is uh, like obtained from the previous project which I has, a current project, and that would like help at me or so. Maybe it will help you or you will try it on your own. So don't be very strict and judge, uh, and you can always try this with your hands. So maybe I will give you like a few seconds to <laughs> read this disclaimer and not to suit me after. <laughs> but that's how it goes. Sorry. So what we are not going to talk about in this presentation, but it's worth mentioning. So I mean worth mentioning as a, a opportunity to make your application faster or it will be helpful or something else. But as for me, that's a different topic and some of them very straightforward or so. And, uh, but that's a point which should be listed since uh, in your specific case, it can be like helpful or so. And it's worth to mention it. First, it's a service workers. It's pretty like straightforward and obvious that you can cache your application, not to fetch the data uh, every time a user uses. Uh, this technology was like for now pretty widespread uh, because of the like um, using progressive also progressive app applications. So I don't think that this is something unfamiliar for you, maybe. Uh, and besides with Angular, as with React also, that will be um, easy to implement. One more note, which I have forgot to mention that um, not all all the points, cases, which will be described in this presentation is strictly binded to the Angular framework as it is. It can be also implemented uh, via different framework. It's about the concept, but some of them like uh, will be strictly binded to this framework, but most of them, most of them is not really so. 
The next one is a cache control. That's basically the same uh, the same idea of caching the application, but that will be more useful for the like smaller applications, which, uh, for example, landing pages. It's a, it's an example landing pages uh, or application which is very similar to this, where is no uh, like practical use of adding a service worker because that will be an overhead for that application. But cache control for caching this application will be just fine. So the next one is a web workers. I have placed it over here because um, you know I know I I I think that you guys know that web workers is a like um, thing to make uh, things go in parallel in JavaScript, but I have placed it in the, uh, this slide because to be honest, uh, for different application, uh, I haven't faced the uh, situation where web worker was implemented or the need to implement the web worker in my project because uh, that was a specific of the business logic. So it's you not, not always can use it in most of the uh, in most of the cases, I was working with uh, like prod operations, uh, rendering, and so there were no uh, strict difficult computation was done on the uh, front end. So using web worker was not like needed. So I haven't added this uh, in details in the my presentation, but you need to take it in your mind that that the useful technology which could be used and you don't need to forget about it. And the last one is algorithm. Basically, the situation is the same. So that's why I have started the uh, with my discussion here that um, the things go different on a regular everyday normal project where um, you are not uh, like um, making the operational system or you don't have simply, simply uh, a lot of complex computation which is done on front end. But in case you do, you should like go into and discover more on the algorithm to make your uh, computation more performant. It means uh, to reduce the complexity time of your um, computations, also operations, which is done on the front end. So it's a small disclaimer concerning that in case if you are, were uh, like interested in particularly one of these four points, <laughs> I, I'm, I need to disappoint you guys and I believe not to like spend your time because we, uh, we will not go um, into this topic more deeper. So let's go forward. So useful tools, um, that's pretty simple one. And uh, from my perspective, I have an, a need to use like more complicated one because uh, performance optimization as so is a thing that you do in, in parallel between your uh, amount or with your uh, regular day-to-day -day business tasks, which is needed for business logic. So, but let's mention that because some of them is very useful and you will like use it in your like day-to-day -day activity. The first one is a browser network performance tab. That's the first uh, tool which uh, you are using to collect the information. Because in case if you like uh, going to the topic of how to optimize your application, the first step you need to do is to collect the information. Like um, maybe you go into a new project or you think how my application uh, should be like or can be improved. The first step is to think uh, about what can be done. And in, in order to do that, you need to like collect more information for that. The first one is a uh, um, browser network and performance tab. Uh, it's up to you what browser to use for that. But uh, personally, I'm a, like Mozilla Firefox regular user, but Chrome has like more opportunities on that. Uh, especially in context of performance tabs. And I have divided the separate um, item for that, like Chrome Lighthouse, because it's a very, very useful tool for that. Uh, it has a lot of tips for that for you, uh, for performance optimized. Maybe some of you haven't seen that. 
uh, it is placed on the second. I will share the preferred form. For the example, I have used like NPM GS uh, Webpack Bundle Analyzer. That's the one tool which we will discuss more furthermore. And we have this tab on the form Lighthouse, which is basically uh, a tool to analyze your application, like on, on a few more like points, like performance, accessibility, best practice, your and PVA, in case if you have the progressive web application. But that's another story which we will not discuss. So the usage of this tool is pretty simple one. You just you can choose the mobile desktop. Uh, also, you can. Um, choose uh, if uh, any of this can be uh, is used for you and you just hit the analyze web page uh, as a drawback um, it's not really constant i mean it also depends on the uh, load of your machine on cpu so uh, the mark of the your application will differ uh, like from time to time so in case if you want to present a better result for example, for your team, of course, the client, as a result of your work, you can always choose the best result, which is, <laughs> which is, um, which is on your lighthouse. Basically, for now it's forty nine, but uh, the previous result for that, as you have seen, was like seventy or so. But in order to eliminate this mistake on statistic, you can like push uh, hit the. Uh, several times as they analyze and you will get the result. Over here you can like find um, when your application was, um, which what, what is really necessary here is uh, like first content paint because in case if user go to your application and see and he or she sees the blank screen, in most cases the user will not uh, stay on the page like if uh, it's load uh more than three seconds but uh, from my like personal experience i would not st stay uh, even for three seconds because uh, i'm thinking that something is broken and so on and the user in case if he is not using a specific application or uh, so he will he will just leave because he will think that something is broken um, so you need to uh, put your effort and to like uh, reduce this uh, time with con content paint and also keep in mind that um, you need to have to say fake the user fake or make it think that something is working gradually because it's uh, also the matter of our I'm sorry it's also a matter of our expectation in case if we um things that some think is done doing some step by step there is a progress sorry i need to pick the doorbell i'm sorry it happens so uh, you need to give the uh, user uh thinking that um your application is working step by step so you will find here a lot of like useful thing it also will analyze and say uh, what can be improved in lots of cases it's very useful some of these points you will not uh, like improve in any case because it's impossible or so but in general it's a very useful statistic which you, which you can see and especially it will also point the big amount of images which you can which is loaded which can be like reduced and so it's a useful tool like to check uh, it will not like be a panacea for you, but that's a good point to refer. The next thing from the slide is, oops, sorry, uh, is uh, Google Page Speed Insight. Uh, Google Page Speed Insight is basically the same Chrome Lighthouse, but hosted. So uh, I find it more useful in case in scope of uh, like st statistic gathering because there will be a less mistake on the statistic which is uh, strictly related to your machine. So it's a good point to use, but uh, it will like have less information than Home Lighthouse. But I for sure did use it. And uh, <clears throat> the next point is like network resources it's like third party uh, tools 
developed by different com companies, but under the hood, in most of the cases, it's the same home load lighthouse, but that will give you an opportunity to check how your application is loaded or like perform it in a different uh, points of the world. Because in case if you're, uh, so here, over here, and over here. Because in case if your application hosted a uh, world spread and uh, your client base is not uh, directly limited to some of the country, you need to you need to know just to know uh, how it's loaded for the different users. And there is um, I have pointed two of them, like two sources, because um, one of them uh, or they both like a backup one to each other because not always first first advantage of them they are free so you basically don't need even to register here in most of the cases to run the check and it's a backup for both of them because not always uh, like service on the different location is available so in case if in one um, in one system, this, for example, website speed test, uh, it's not available. For example, let it be Asia or Africa. It most of the cases it will be available here. But um, the personally, I prefer this .com .2's website speed test because it's more convenient since it allows you to pick uh, three uh, um, points on the map uh, without registering or like paying and so on when this one up trends.com allows you only one uh one strict application from the list but it's still helpful because it's like give you the parallel and you have the um like mark from the different tests and in case even if you try to you run this npm js this for example from paris let it be singapore it will start test, we can choose the browser over here and it will get the result. The same while it will compute, we will try also another one. This is a .com.tools, which basically the, once again, this basically uh, is a lighthouse or Google uh, space speed inside under the hood, but this application run it through the different location. You will not be, uh, able maybe you can play with a vpn or so but uh, that's is more comfortable to check than switching your vpn and so on to get the google pay speed inside working as you as you wish so as you see it's starting gathering some information so like Warsaw, it has been loaded then we're now london now and it has the like mark slow how much time of the um, the application was loading, but that basically all the size. So it's uh, in details, you will see uh, like first content paint and so on. So it will give you some information. And over here, I believe, yes, we have, uh, we have the result. It's like 76 from the Singapore. We see the load time, we, we can check like, First content page, time to interact, and so on, and the different slides, which basically um, really similar to the lighthouse. It's it's lighthouse or Google Page Speed inside, but from the different locations. That's from the um, from the useful tools on the hosted environments, and uh, the another one which I would like to know is a package. Um, which you can like install as a dev dependency and use it to analyze your bundle. It's a Webpack bundle analyzer. It's pretty useful in case if you want to see uh, how uh, your chunks is uh, divided, what is uh, like loaded into them, how much of your uh, of your application like is in a static, a parsed, and uh, zipped states. So uh, we will have a different screenshots made with this Webpack, uh, Webpack Bundle Analyzer. So you will see how it can be used and what it will be like useful too. We have uh, used it uh, 
as a monkey <laughs> to test our uh, Google Page Speed Insight and Lighthouse so far, but you can check the um, documentation over here. And as you can see, it's really like uh, constantly developing with the last publish and it's used a lot. So I believe that the small note on the tooling, which can be used, as you can see, there's no super sophisticated uh, analyzing tools, but that basically is a basic set, which will allow you to go and done the work. So let's go to the next slide. And the first uh, topic, which uh, goes into the performance optimization, which I have like highlighted is a data transfer and how I have put it as a first step since um, in most of the cases that the easiest easiest thing which you can do and uh, the results which you can present to the client because you cannot like do this stuff because you just want to do this uh, you always oh in most of the cases you need to share these results um, to the client or other stakeholders so um, and that's in most cases the a cool you will get the cool numbers uh, which you can present to these stakeholders because First of all, it's very obvious. It's really easy to do, but I have placed it since uh, maybe it's really a specific of Angular application because most of them is like used for a big uh, internal applications, which is um, not super competitive uh, against other applications, which is publicly on the internet. Uh, and the truth is that um, no project was using uh, was zipping their bundles. Maybe that's a like specific experience of my like career or project, but that's the truth that uh, that project was not zipped. And what uh, why you need to zip your projects? You can speed up your application by uh, reducing the time which is uh, your application loading the packages for that. And by zipping them, you will like reduce it up to like 85 or in some cases 90% of, um, of the initial size. That's uh, because, the, because we can compress it. And in case if we compress it, we just transfer less data and transferring it takes really more time than uh, unpackaging it, uh, like unzipping these packages and then uh, parsing them and make some logic from the browsers, from the browser side. So that's the easiest way to improve speed on your application. And even if you, can, if you have like access to the uh, like Jinx file, you can do this uh, all on your own because there's a different method for that. First, and I believe that like the easiest and might be more convenient from my perspective is to um, add this compressing on the build phase when you like uh, add another script to your, for example, command and npm run build or something and you just run compress. For this, you can use package zipper. It's also not a dead project. It's uh, like a constantly developing and from a few years ago when it was like supporting only a zip algorithm of uh, like zipping your project, compressing your project. For now it use, uh, it can use a different one like broadly or deflate, uh, but in most cases you will also, you will need only like zip or broadly. Zip is a pretty older uh, algorithm compressing, but it has like a full widespread support. Broadly is now like really also have a cool support. It's an algorithm which was developed by Google and it has a slightly, slightly better performance. Uh, from the practical point of view, it has like around 4%, 4 or 5% that differs on the content which is compressed, but it doesn't really have like 40% better like, uh, compressing or so, which I used to hear from the people that that's not how the practical things works. Four or five percent, but 
it's uh, it's worth to try. So another another uh, option is to use compressing in case if you're using CDNs and CDNs is another like uh, topic for the improving your performance in case if your application is used global wide spread but uh, that I believe we will uh, we will put few words on that in a few steps but the uh, most in most cases CDNs offers you the built in uh, opportunity to deliver compressed files by uh, on the when you push the new files to the CDNs or on the runtime runtime is not really so uh, optimized because it, it will like uh, compressed on the delivery of the, the, the files so you can try it uh, the easiest ways on your build phase and in most of the project it will it will work great Personally, for me, it, it worked. So what will uh, that will give you is the, uh, pro from the practical thing and uh, for our monkey, for the experiment is the same uh, NPM GS Webpack Bundle Analyzer uh, page. We can see that it uses zipping and PMGS it uses zipping. Uh, it uh, use algorithm broadly, so content encoding is a header which you can just check if uh, um, the file which you are receiving is uh, where compressed and by which algorithm it was compressed. In case if this will be uh, compressed by zip algorithm with GZ and for now for broad it's BR and you will see what amount of data was really transferred from the real size and you can see that 1.26 megabytes was transferred from the 4.23 so it's like 29% only was transferred and it's really a lot pretty give you improvement on the speed and then the case which you will find out that it will uh, like add you like for 20 and up to 20 or so points on the lighthouse uh, because that's what really matters especially on the mobile devices because um, maybe on a desktop you will not uh, um, see such a speed up but on the mobiles especially with uh, mobile internet like 3G or 4G, that will be an uh, important, important step to do. Uh, so uh, another thing which is not really so uh, easy to do uh, because as uh, adding just zipping was like a day or two or in case if you have the uh, also need to involve DevOps engineers, it's different. It's different uh, on a different project, but uh, here you will need to make some changes to your structure, how you like import things, how you use your modules and so on. And maybe in case if your project wasn't uh, like um, using this technique or this uh, like feature, let it be so, um, you will uh, have to make some refactoring which will be um, continuous in time because you cannot uh, always do some work in one chunks and maybe in a month or two, depends on the uh, size of application, you can step by step uh, refactor it and improve the uh, load or speed of the code uh, on your project. So how you can do this from the first step, is you, which is really easy, is you can um, lazy load, use this lazy load feature even more. Uh, the first, which is commonly used, it's not really a problem. I, and I haven't seen a lot of the like, not using that on the project, it's not to taking into account like some Indian project or so. Um, it's uh, like e-loading children, but you can also um, make this uh, even more convenient when you also lazy load, uh, lazy loaded features, so dividing them into a smaller, smaller chunk with different subroads and module systems that will uh, brings you a better way of uh, loading the code because in such a case you will load only that amount of code which you really need for this page and for this uh, state of time. In such a case you uh, make some economy on the uh, loading the data, that's the first step, uh, the parsing the code and execution which 
legs basically will make some noise over here. By uh, that means I'm having in my mind the, this example of potential structure. For example, we have the uh, patient feature or so, or lazy loaded page. It depends on uh, your taste, how to name on your project, this folder or so. Um, it's a lazy loaded feature and it has its own roads and its own module, which actually have the import of the first uh, loaded page, which is needed. For example, patient like overview or so, which is initially loaded. And we, in such a case, import this directly to the patient module by, uh, by the start, but other mod modules, pages, sub pages, is lazy loaded. So it will like have its own roads, like, documents role yes uh, and uh, documents module which uh, import it all all of that which you want that's um, a small remark which i need to do that in case if you are using like standalone components uh, across all of your applications and uh, in case you have this routing strategy, that's not really um, like obstacle here because you can still uh, import what you need in a standalone component, even if you don't use it like modules or try not to use modules, Angular modules uh, so far. So this is a potential structure which will give you a better code split and Another thing which will go in the pair, uh, and you need to do this, um, this simultaneously with this, like a better uh, uh, ch chunk or load strategy, is uh, shared modules. Um, this is a common pitfall which I uh, like observe from the different projects. That from the one hand, it's really comfortable for the in the development perspective, and you have this shared module or material module that depends on the uh, project's uh, like taste, people how people do their works, because uh, you don't need to import another thing uh, in your modules. So you just import the shared module, which basically import everything you need. Uh, and that's how the wor works go then. Uh, it's speed up. It's more speed up like the development. It's more comfortable. You need to use more less, less imports and so on, but it had the drawbacks. And the huge drawback for, the, for this is that it prevents a proper code splitting and tree shaking. Because in case if you import something and you don't need this import, the webpack will um, not include this package into the um, bundle. But in case if you import it in the like array or shared modules or arrays or the list of the imports, which you basically then import that for the application, which it's not Angular-based application. Um, that will prevent <laughs> proper code splitting and tree shaking. So in the end, you will um, you will have a lazy loaded code, but uh, which is divided by the feature pages. But uh, that third-party libraries, dependencies, and so on, which is like uh, use it for them and only for them and they are not for example for example present in the amp component or the top level uh, component of page they will be there also because in most of the cases your top level components and so on will also use the shared modules and that will be in the initial bundle and that what will go to the user even if it doesn't need it at this time so in case if you try to get rid of the shared modules, you can do this step by step by um, dividing your fe by feature by feature, uh, removing and adding all the inputs which basically this component or module need, you will get some results. And these results can be captured and discovered by that two which we have noted, uh, noted previously, it's a Webpack Bundle Analyzer. And I will give you the uh, example of what exactly that will bring you uh, from the, my previous projects where pre initially the shared module was used. And then, uh, I mean, we as a team 
we put our effort to get rid of that, that and then we get the result which was presented to the stakeholders. Uh, from the network tab, you can see that we got some results. For this one, uh, we don't have the... Sorry, I will display it a little bit another thing. Um, so for this one, we don't have uh, like compressing for this state of moment, but that what what was added also to this project. So as you can see, um, no libraries were removed from the dependencies, or no libraries were added to this to the dependencies to this project. We haven't like modified a lot of the code. The only thing which was we doing is removing these shared modules and splitting up our imports. So that's what the result. First of all, we had 4.18 megabytes of data, which was transferred to the uh, how to say landing page of the application or initial page of application. We basically haven't opened like a feature uh, page or so uh, in this in this page. I haven't uh, placed uh, like more UI designs because uh, that will be like a violation of the intellectual property. So you can trust me from, from my words. And as a result, we got minus, 39% of data which was loaded. We also got the, like more chunks over here because you can see previously what was seven requests, now it's nine requests and only 2.57 megabytes of data was loaded to the exactly the same page. So once again, we haven't cut it off the project or something, we had just removed the shared modules and placed the imports for the modules, uh, all of them, which which is needed basically for the component. For example, in case if your component requires, for example, mat button module, you can you're using material designs and it use mat button module, um, it should not uh, import material modules, which basically, uh, your custom modules which where you import all of the material modules which you are using on the project that what's the thing that you should not do but what you need to do uh, is to import only for example mud batch button module and so on in such a case you will have a lot of the place of the components where this mud button modules imports but uh, it will not be duplicated or so uh, Webpack will create a different packages for that, which is shared between the different modules, and this um, package will be loaded on the need, on the demand. And in such a case, you will have the um, such increase on code splitting. And from the uh, Webpack Webpack uh, bundle analyzer, you can check. Uh, uh, also, how the project was looking looking from the like parsed state of the things. Uh, we had a bigger <clears throat> vendor module and a smaller like uh, packages, which is basically a feature modules. A lot of the dependency were. Uh, imported inside this vendor due to the shared module, for example, a lot of the material components, a lot of the like third party libraries like Fulcandra, PDFGS and so on. That was uh, on the state before a factor and you can see that uh, we had the all chance in parsed state means aglified, minified, uh, 4.37 megabytes. And after the refactor, we got a little bit different point of view. We had uh, uh, more chunks. We have uh, a way more packages. So in case if you compare from different from this screen to this screen, you can see that vendor side, vendor package was like reduced. A lot of third party libraries was moved to the different packages, uh, which will be loaded only when a feature uh will be loaded it's basically a, a different page which have used this functionality for example pdf gs and not the initial page but as you can see that um, the sum of all chunks has even reduced because previously it was 437 and after 432 
we have once again uh, a way bigger amount of imports, but that doesn't like uh, duplicate the code. It uh, gives us just uh, more possibilities for code splitting. So that's uh, what can bring to your application like more more like um, performance optimi optimized to be more performance but optimized, but in a way when the general application is not uh, reduced because uh, one way or another you will go to the point on your project when uh, it will it will not be small. Basically, it will not be small, but you can split it, cut it off, and uh, import only, load only what you need. And in such a case, it will work fine. That, I guess, uh, most, of that, most of that what you can do. And other improvements, which is worth mentioning, is uh, like images. Um, you can use optimal size for that for your page, and you can also check the, that images via Lighthouse and so on, Google Page Speed Insight. You can lazy load the images with uh, browser native built features like this uh, loading attribute. It has different support yet. You can check it with Can I Use? But that the feature which basically for sure uh, uses uh, and working in Chrome. So it will like be um, for most of the use your users, it will like be useful. Then the thing which you can use uh, and uh, implement, but that with a cooperation with your uh, backend team is like use facets, for example, for media as videos, it's a heavy, heavy media and uh, uh, cooperate with the backend for like for the specific situation how to do uh, in such a way or implement your feature in such a way when uh, less data data is transferred less data data is analyzed and less data is rendered for example in case of the images and all together with that you can um, it's pretty real to get to your like 90 90 plus uh, mark of the google page speed insight or lighthouse uh, i don't think that you will ever have a hundred or so that's most cases possible but that will you will have a really optimal speed and um, it's easy to present. I mean, easy to present the result and the stakeholder will appreciate this and more and most, uh, which is more even more important that you will feel uh, that uh, you are doing something. <laughs> it's a sense of doing that, um, uh, hey, I can do this. Uh, I mean, in, in this matter of fact. And the second second part of the optimization is runtime optimization. It's pretty um, hard to do. Uh, it's not very, very so convenient, but in case if you have the like some heavy feature with, uh, for example, when it's rendered a lot or data is updated too much, uh, you will find it useful and just in, in uh, just your application will will have a smooth uh, user experience when there will be no glitches for user and uh, it will be comfortable to use this. First point is basically strictly binded to the framework. It's a using push change detection with incorporation with the sync pipe. Once again, people uh, don't like to use it from my uh, like observation because it, um, it puts a different, a, like additional layer of complexity in, course, in scope of development. You need to think more reactively. You need to think how to do that uh, uh, your uh, model and your view is like updated properly. In such a case, um, first on the first steps, you will feel yourself uncomfortable, but then in case if you do not, for example, subscribe directly uh, and uh, subscribe to the data and which is returned in observables directly in the view with like a sync pipe or share your observable via this hack when you have ngif and then a sync uh, and subscribing to this data and then share it with an S, for example, you have the data or users, which is basically observable, you async to that, which may basically mean to switch your subscribing, and then you can share this 
users um, way down to this uh, UU uh, via S operator. It's an I mean, Angular op op operator. Um, as users, and you don't need to have this multiple async pipe subscription. That's the way which you will get comfortable with, and that what will give you a dramatic um, increase in performance because uh, Angular would, will do a, a way um, a way less uh, change detection checks. Um, I haven't placed additionally some such things as do not like place method calls in your views. I mean, or uh, do not place some logic into ng do check uh, hook because I think that is pretty like uh, it's pretty obvious and I'm I mean. Everyone should know that, so I haven't placed it as a different point of view. Then try to split complex logic to a smaller task, uh, tasks executed in promises because um, the event loop of the browser, as you may know already, that it paste uh, the render logic between the some computation logic and in case if you split the heavy load <laughs> tasks, it will try to update and render the view uh, to the user and the user will not uh, like feel that um, the application is stuck. So it will see that it's doing something, it has like a smooth user experience, but uh, that's the, way, the thing that it's really hard to do. Then minimize your code in case uh, of uh, you face performer degradation and two previous approaches didn't help, you try, should try to use delegations. And that means basically um, that you can uh, move the event listeners to the top uh, and you will have, for example, not, that's a simple, simple approach, which uh, basically is not binded to the framework. Uh, but it's a very powerful thing to use because you uh, can very dramatically uh, reduce the event uh, amount of event listeners and the amount of the nodes which should be rendered like first and so on. And in such a case, uh, you eliminate a lot of work which which browser engine should do. So that will will can give you in suitable situation and dramatical growth in scope of performance, especially especially if you have the, some part of the application which is constantly updating and it has a lot of a lot of nodes. Because um, from my previous experience, which uh, one one project we had the, um, that was a trading platform and it has a lot of tickets. I mean tickets, I have to say that um, stocks, which was updated, which had a lot of inner elements, which was uh, updated via WebSocket, and a lot of a lot of data was transferred, a lot of data was updated. And in such a case, um, when uh, we have removed as much DOM elements as we can, we applied delegation. We we re achieved some results, and I was can can uh, I would like to show you because. Uh, it's always easier to understand from the example on how can this help. So from the first first screen, you can see that um, the same part of the application, which uh, basically you, user was not refactored and the user was uh, experiencing glitches, stacks, and all of this with the i7 processor. So that's a not really very slow processor. As you can see, most of the like CPU time, it was scripting, rendering, some loading time, painting, and only uh, like four for second idle. So in most of the cases, it just freezes. It just freezes. And by implementing these previous uh, points, which I have told to you, we, uh, we have um, achieved a very better performance for this specific part of application, as you can see, that's the same application. It even does have the same uh, URL, user charting, and over here you can see this user charting. So that's how can 
things be done. And basically, that the same, the place where you can um, check it is the Chrome Performance tab. When you open your exact uh, part of application where you need to start the check and analyze how this thing going, you just record it. You make some interaction with the website, and then you get this. Uh, these pictures of uh, just to compare but also it's uh, not to forget about the basics uh, it's also comfortable to use uh, console time uh, method uh, just to check how and how much time is uh, getting to you from the specific like method call or some operation so in case if you do this you basically don't need the performance tab for the con console time will work as well uh, so when to do that will be a really quick one because um, um, there will be uh, no ideal project when every two or three sprints you will get, for example, a sprint for refactoring. That's uh, not what clients would like to pay for. They pay for the features and they want to get the business results. They simply don't really care about the performance unless it degradates. And, the, and when it degradates, uh, they will put the question to you. So in case, if you don't want to get this question from the clients, you need to try to put this refactoring, some, some stuff have to do better um, alongside in each sprint, gradually chunk by chunk. And in the end picture, you will have a better, a better project and so on. And for those of you who has um, who has really appreciated the general, you may guess uh, where uh, the, this link to was done on the first um, on the first my um, presentation and uh, this regular everyday normal project. So that's the things how how it goes. And uh, I guess that's it from my side. Maybe in case if you do have some question and I'm able to answer for to you, I'm glad to to hear or appreciate any feedback from you.